Hey, B.C., it's Mazzy. Whack a mole. And thank you, Melinda Murth Murthery, Murphy, for this fabulous whiskey from Kentucky. Hawk and Raiders, as heard in the new Quentin Tarantino film, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. So this is a whack-a-mole number, I have no idea, 25, 26, we'll find out, you'll see it. I mean, you already know. I don't know, but you know because you saw the title. So, I'm calm in a namaste way, and uh, to Jeff Kempen, this is not this is not Krabby Mazzy. Is that what you said, Krabby Mazzy? You like Krabby Mazzy. I don't know if you said Cranky Mazzy, <laughs> sorry. This is not Cranky Mazzy. I'm calm, I'm having a wonderful whiskey from Kentucky, and I'm gonna do a whack-a-mole where I pick five random albums. Maybe I'll go longer this time. Maybe I'll pick 10. I don't know. I just got finish, finished with 10 days of back to back to back guests. And I was gonna start this to, uh, this afternoon, but if you saw the last video that I posted, the fucking blue angels were buzzing the house, buzzing the neighborhood, buzzing Seattle, um, getting ready for Seafair. Hey, I have nothing against, you know, our Navy fighter pilots. You know, it'll be fun. It's fun to watch them, right? But when your house is shaking and you're trying to do a a VC video and you're trying to do some work, trying to make a phone call, have a, be on a conference call for work. I actually do work for a living, work out of my house. That's shaking, literally the building shakes. So, hey, great demonstration, great promotion for Seafair, for the Air Force, for the Navy. Not personally, but when you're, you know, hey, it's once a year, so okay but it's gonna be for the next four fucking days. Okay, that was Cranky Mazzy coming out, Jeff. Okay, I pick five random albums and I talk about them. Uh, woo. That's good stuff, thank you, Melissa. Melinda, God, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, all right, here we go. I'm gonna pick the first five and just, uh, we'll just take it from there. One. Two, three, four, five, no. Hat Shot, Van Morrison, Healing Game. Uh, this just came out a couple months ago on vinyl. I've had the record since, what, the uh, 90s? 97. To me, it's one of my last favorite Van Morrison records. Uh, song, The Healing Game. Um, Rough God Goes Riding. Piper at the Gates of Dawn is great. And The Burning Ground. But in The Healing Game, of course. But um, I love that photograph. Hey, talk about, you know, Cranky Mazzy. Van's a cranky guy. I saw him three times in my life. One was around 73. There's a tape you can hear online somewhere. It was a bootleg at the um, record plant and saw Silly to Live, k -San Radio, and an intimate, maybe, maybe less than 25, 30 people were there. Saw Van Morrison in his heyday. He lived in um, Marin County. His parents had a record store in San Anselmo. I worked in the record business for ABC Records in 78, 79. And one of my accounts was Caledonia Music in San Anselmo, which was a little record store that Van bought and his parents um, owned it and ran it. So I used to, um, his parents were my clients in essence. So it was kind of a cool thing. So Healing Game uh, on Legacy reissue came out this year, early this year. Highly recommended. You know, my hands must be just going after records that I show all the time. It's amazing with all these like, Five to 6,000 albums in my collection. My favorite Birds album. I did a whole Birds thing, Fifth Dimension. So what can I say? 5D, great song, you know? Birds, Fifth Dimension. 
nothing else to say. I've said it many times. And also, I just showed this. Bootleg, Dylan, bootleg, great white wonder. While the establishment burns. I mean, sometimes you kind of feel that way. Trademark equality, bootleg label. Look at my uh, Beetle bootleg uh, video from a couple weeks ago. It has an intro with Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan's first bootleg. He was pretty the first pop rock artist that uh, was bootlegged. 1969, so 50 years of bootlegging. Bob Dylan, Great White Wonder. It's funny, I was in a store the other day and they were selling uh, one or two of these um, trademark of quality Dylan bootlegs for like $75. Really, are they are they really like collectible? You know, I don't know, I have no idea. Okay, I think I, sh I showed this too. God, Primal Scream. Um, Sonic Flower Groove by Primal Scream, uh, 90s, um, Psych, Rock, UK, um, good record. Mazzy's got to get new materials, that one, two, three, four, we're going to have to go with ten today because, um, too many repeats, one, two, three, four, and five, okay, five. This is actually the first... Joni Mitchell record I got, um, Ladies of the Canyon. And then I got the, started going before and after, but um, 1971 or two, I believe, 72. Um, of course, it's got um, three amazing songs on here that you will know. Big Yellow Taxi, Woodstock, and The Circle Game. This is my original copy, my original reprise copy. You all know that label. And, um, Right. I mean, Circle Game, Tom Rush did a version of that. Woodstock, uh, and that's timely, because uh, this month, August 1969, 50th anniversary of Woodstock. Joni Mitchell wasn't even there, but she wrote that song that Crosby, Stills, and Nash covered on their um, album, which they used for the film, the studio version by Crosby, Stills, and Nash. So... I'm gonna have a little drink here and pick five more, okay? Because you wanna see more Mazzy's Whack-A-Mole. That sounds kind of uh, suggestive, but that's not what I meant. I don't want more crabby Mazzy now, so. Okay, five more. One. Two. Three. I'm not putting from the jazz. I have jazz stuff. I'll show you maybe if we feel like it. If I, I might tilt the camera down. Four and five. Okay. Lumpy gravy, gravy, primordial. Uh, this was a record store day, and this is actually not. I think this is orchestrated. It's not even Zappa. Um, well, Zappa's conducting a version of it, so this was a later uh, recording. I have the original, actually, of Lumpy Gravy, but it, this is not that. Um, do I want to show what it is? Oh, it's more orchestrative, you know, it's mainly for the, the diehard, but it's sexy, right? Look at that. I mean, if you're a Zappa completist, you need this. Um, if you're just a casual Zappa person, it's nothing that you need. Um, but there you go. Okay. Probably one of the least interesting of the Fleetwood Mac albums, the middle period Fleetwood Mac, Penguin. Of course, I love the artwork. My original cover from, was it 73 or 4? This is when I worked in record stores again, 1973. I was right. This is the period with, uh, obviously, McVie and Fleetwood, but with Bob Welch, Bob Weston, who didn't last long, Dave Walker on one song, Steve Nye, Christine McVie. Um, I mean, for the completist, again, you probably don't need this, but my copy is super, super clean because I hardly played it again. Again, we're at that same reprise label. But Fleetwood Mac, Penguin, uh, Reprise Records, 1973, 
not one of uh, their best. Mystery to Me, I think, came out after this, right? Is that right? Or is that before this? Uh, that's a great album. Um, but anyway, Penguin. Okay. I took a moment for myself there. Okay. An amazing record. Otis Redding, the soul album. I mean, all his albums are soul albums, right? R&B, one of the greatest singers, died too young. Otis Redding. Uh, this is uh, Volt Records, but it's a, um, a reissue. But find any of this stuff, this re any of the Otis Redding, Reading records, you know, Rhino did some great reissues, but um, you know, another great thing was a record store day, but then it was actually officially released. Great expanded CD of the uh, Whiskey A Go Go shows. I wish I'd pull that, but pick up Rod, <laughs> Rod Stewart, excuse me, Otis Redding, not Rod Stewart, we're not going there today. Otis Redding, uh, pick up the um, live album, it's I think it's a double LP at the Whiskey, Whiskey A Go Go in LA. Or the large expanded CD. Since this is a, a, the vinyl community, we're talking records. So, so there. Um, Rodriguez. Wonderful record. If you haven't seen the film, um, what's it called? It's not Sinner Man. Um, Soul Man Ross. I'm blanking out the name of the record. Um, the documentary. But the documentary on Rodriguez, just Google it. It's amazing story is he's recorded these kind of soulful rock and roll almost Dylan-esque country-ish folky rocky bluesy records in the 70s had a few albums kind of disappeared didn't do much you know and then um, all of a sudden apparently for the last 30 friggin years he's been big what in South America I think it was I'm forgetting someone's gonna uh, correct me but and all of a sudden he gets a resurgence, the documentaries, albums come out, and luckily he got some royalties, he's, tour, he's touring, he's amazing, you should see him, Rodriguez, but the documentary, um, come on, this is called Coming From Reality, and I really can't remember the name of uh, the doc right now, Sh look, Searching for Sugar Man, is that right? Searching for Sugar Man. This is a light in the attic issue, great reissue label out of... Uh, um, Seattle. So, worth worth having. I mean, this should be in your collection. And lastly, my secret, one of my secret girlfriends from my record collection, Liz Fair. Uh, I believe this was her second album called White Chocolate Space Egg. White Chocolate Space Egg. White Chocolate Space Egg. Liz Fair. The first album is great. Minimal, indie, a little punky, a little Court, Courtney Barnett-ish, which she is influenced. Must, I think Courtney must be influenced by Liz Fair. Uh, she's back on the road again. Check her out. But those first three, four albums uh, are amazing. The box set that came out, our record store day, what, a year or two ago? Amazing. Uh, if you like that indie thing, um, songs like Girls' Room, Shit loads of money fantasize what makes you happy headache ride only son white chocolate space egg big tall man anyway johnny feel good polyester bride so um this is an album that i adore i adore her first three albums quite a bit then capital records uh she was on what matador records i believe yeah capital uh picked up uh, her contract and she did an, one album that they glammed her up and tried to make her a pop star, which a lot of um, of her fans didn't love. But she's back, true to form now, touring. Um, so Liz F Fair, something you should get. Um, anyway, that's Mazzy's uh, Whack-A-Mole, first one in a few weeks. All my friends have moved on back to the Bay Area, back to uh, New Jersey. The record in it, so I better go uh, check that out. Um, 
just to show you a little show and tell, I'm doing reorganizing things. These these are my jazz records down there, and they're, they're gonna be they're gonna have a new home. So here and here. So, Mazzy loves you, VC. Thanks for watching. Um, I need to come up with a 500 plus subscri subscription contest, and that'll be happening um, oh, when I get some sleep. After I get some sleep. Thank you.